of learners under the CBC curriculum is currently in grade 8 amid a myriad of challenges. Inadequate teachers, poor infrastructure, lack of equipment for practical lessons are some of the hurdles bedeviling the much hyped curriculum, especially in public schools. Despite all these challenges, the government insists that all is well and that nothing will derail CBC implementation. Alan Ochanda looks at the JS situation in the Western region. A public school tucked in Siaya and grade 7 learners are in for mathematics lesson. They share desks in threes and this is the real picture in most public primary schools. Last year, the government hired the first ever teachers to handle the junior secondary level. Most schools received between three to four teachers, of whom only one in most schools was hired on permanent and pensionable terms. The rest are interns to debt. School heads in harsh tones decry the dire situation but cannot speak to the media as the Teacher Service Commission has its communication structures. We are having uh, three teachers uh, handling the two classes. I think that's where we have a small problem because we are supposed to separate these two, two classes into two students each. We need to have two students for grade 7, we also need to have two students for grade 8. But because of the uh, lack of enough manpower, we, we are still having grade, six, grade 7 and we are learning from one grade, uh, which is a little bit uh, swollen. Uh, we need to do something about it. Uh, but we're expecting the government if it gives us maybe one more teacher or two, we can separate them into two streams. If three teachers were teaching last year and they were teaching one grade and we have two grades this year, the only logical mathematics is that we double the teachers because last year the teachers were already greatly understaffed, they were under-resourced and they could not effectively discharge their duties as teachers because of their numbers. So it's not a question of if, it's a question of when TSC is sending more teachers to the junior secondary schools for effective teaching and for effective learning. The CBC curriculum teaching areas are largely practical oriented. Most public schools, however, have nothing close to a laboratory, leave alone the equipment. <laughs> Capitation monies in schools is determined by the learner's population. The special identifier name's number then determines the exact amount school receive. Animals and plants. This compounds learners' troubles as they may never be exposed to laboratories and other practical lessons. We don't have a laboratory in the school, but we normally turn one class into a laboratory when they want to take some practicals. So but what we have just done, we have bought the equipment that's supposed to use. We have also bought the apparatus. So whenever they want to check on a, a practical, we normally turn one class into a laboratory, then they use it for that particular period. But after that lesson, we, it, we also change it back to a class, so where learners can continue having their, their studies. But we have tried a bit because uh, CBC is about hands-on, practical oriented. So if these learners miss to do that, then it means they are missing some skills in their, in their studies. Domiciling the junior secondary sections in primaries too, according to education stakeholders, was a miscalculation, as public primary schools are generally of poor infrastructure. The competency-based curriculum pioneer class is currently in grade 8. Eight years later, however, public schools are still grappling with the issue of inadequate learning materials no equipment in their laboratories and teacher shortage. The case is however different in the private schools. The situation in private schools is totally different. The infrastructure is enviable with well-equipped laboratories. The computer laboratory, music and home science rooms at Kakamega Hill School a testament of the capital intensive nature of the CBC curriculum. We have the laboratory in, in terms of agriculture and nutrition. Uh, we have a laboratory that is set, there are two rooms, uh, so that they can accommodate the number. We have also pre-technical studies. Uh, this one deals with plumbing, masonry and uh, so forth. Uh, also we have three of them uh, that are in place. Learners are taking position in those laboratories. Also the equipment, like the protective gears are in place in all laboratories across. We start by explaining to them exactly what we expect them to do when we go to the laboratories. So they come here with the prerequisite knowledge of the practical activities that we are supposed to carry out at the laboratory level. So they do it perfectly well and uh, we encourage them to do it individually as learners or at group level. 
Initially, schools had introduced new school uniforms for the junior secondary learners. The Ministry of Education, however, holds all learners from grade 1 to 9 should don similar uniforms. I know that the government had already said that the children will use one uniform, but for us we had set everything in place. We wanted our children, our junior children to look uh, unique from the others because, uh, for, because of easy identification. Because if they are in the same uniform, you may not be able to recognize and uh, uh, handle them very fast. Although understaffing remains a thorn in the sector, and those deployed have specialized in two subjects each. In most cases, technical subjects do not have handlers. There are teachers, extra teachers in the primary section that were under grade 8 and grade 7. A number of them have been deployed to assist in, in junior secondary. And another a, num a number that are also being employed by the government, the Teacher Service Commission, to support in this sector. So we are moving on well. What we are doing is monitoring and supporting the JSS teachers in the classroom. We are moving away from uh, assessment of uh, rooms and so on. We are doing what is called classroom support for the teachers who are in those classrooms. That's what we are emphasizing now. So these technical areas, the home science, the art and craft, the computer, the music, these are areas that do not have teachers. And teachers who have been trained to teach other subjects have been called upon out of good faith to help the learners by teaching them. We need to capacity build them. We need to retool them and train them to adopt the teaching methodology that was envisaged under the competency-based curriculum. During the campaign season, President William Ruto observed CBC was not well thought out at inception and to correct the mess, he formed a presidential working party tasked with looking at the grey areas. The task force will later hand the head of state its findings. Some Kenyans, however, felt the recommendations did not reflect their wishes. Alan Ochanda, KTN News. From Kakamega and the